Hey everyone, Brad here from Heavy Diesel Softworks, and today I want to give you an overview of the B BPVR character and BPVR character hand blueprints. Um, so let's jump right in. So BPVR character is how we um, is the character system for Weapon Master VR, and um, I'm going to go through the variables and some of the functions. And just kind of give you all an overview of like what's going on and what we're doing, what you should change, what you shouldn't change, and just you know how how it all works so that you can better make your own changes for your game and make it work better for your game. So let's go ahead and get started with some of the uh, the options here. Now the do not touch um, grouping is is mainly it's it, these are all variables that are used by the actual system. Um, and I wouldn't change them unless you're actually going in and changing how, how you want things to, how the actual blueprint to work. Whereas the rest of these are things you can set to, um, uh, to change more of the top level where you're not actually changing the nit and gritty, you know, uh, parts of the blueprint. So under character setup. We have these three, first three variables are actually options variables. And as you know, we've added in an, an options, um, in-game options menu. And so I would set these um, to their defaults at all times. And um, then let your players set them in the options menu. But I'll, I'll, I'll um, talk about them a little bit here. Uh, the B, use uh, uh, dynamic hand, main hand. Uh, this is... Um, whether or not you want to use uh, dynamic main hand switching, which is where your main hand can be your right or your left hand, depending on if you're picking up a, uh, a gun with your right hand or your left hand. Um, main hand in Weapon Master is your dominant hand, whereas off hand is your non-dominant hand. So, for example, um, guns, like all, all firearms require... Um, can only be picked up by the main hand. That's because they use the trackpad for manipulating the different, you know, dropping a mag, you know, changing your fire mode, etc. Whereas on the offhand, we use the trackpad for actual movement. And that's why we had to um, designate a main hand and an off hand. In the future, you're going to be able to use dynamic main hand and have it where you can actually swap the weapon between your hands without having to drop it and pick it back up with another gun. Um, that's probably coming in 1.1. Um, well, I already discussed main hand. This is just whatever your dominant hand is. Um, double press to drop. This has to do with the grip and dropping of, uh, of all, all, all weapons that snap to your hand. And uh, what it means is if somebody finds that they're hitting their grip accidentally and dropping guns, Double press to drop means you just have to hit the grip twice to drop. Spawn with hand object. Um, these are going to be our, our spawning or our starting options right here for uh, weapons. Um, in the future, these are probably going to be broken off into their own section, um, particularly when we get to 1.1 where we're adding in loading and saving of, uh, of your, your characters or your player's inventory. So, but for right now, I'll go ahead and go over them. Spawn with hand object just means you want an object to spawn in a character's main hand. And um, you don't have to specify what the main hand is. It's going to read it um, when on begin play. It's going to read it and put it in the right hand. But you can put any object in there. Spawn with primary holster. This means that you want to spawn an object in the primary holster. Um, and you need to make sure you're trying to spawn a primary weapon in a primary holster, which are long guns and bows and stuff like that. The primary holster is the holster that's on your back. Uh, the secondary holster, spawn with, in secondary holster, is the uh, pistol holster. You need to make sure you're spawning a secondary object into that. Uh, then, then we have the melee holster, spawn a melee holster, and then you need to make sure you're spawning a melee object into that. Spawn with mags. All this does is it basically says, okay, we want to spawn with mags. Well, let's read both the uh, the starting hand object, the primary holster object, and the secondary holster object, and let's spawn this number of mags, uh, primary mags that spawn, and this number of 
uh, secondary mags that spawn. Um, bullets is the same thing. Um, most of this is is used for like a wave based game, where each time the player spawn or starts their game, they're gonna start with you know X number of whatever. Um, it's this stuff won't be used um, with the loading and saving. It'll just be there for people who are making wave based games. And uh, in 1.1, when we have that designation, a lot of these options are going to get moved around again um, into their own separate sections to make them a little bit more clear, like what game type you should be using with and when you should ignore them. Um, show FPS, this is another option that's found in the in-game menu. Um, it is uh, basically shows the frames per second on uh, the upper left portion of the player's view. Um, player health and player max health. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is your current health and max health is the maximum health your character can have. Capsule offset. This is the offset of the damage capsule. And if we look at the tick function over here, we actually set the damage capsule's half height to take into account crouching. So the damage capsule is the one where all your holster, um, all your holsters are attached to except for your yeah, all your holsters are attached to this, um, and uh, it's what's how your character is going to take damage. It moves with your uh, your camera, and um, when you take damage, you take damage through this capsule. So the uh, the capsule offset is is put in there to make sure it's um, the correct distance um, down from the. Uh, See if I'm make sure I'm saying this right. Uh, it's 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 to bring the the uh, the capsule down slightly so it's not completely um, over the top of your character's head. Let's see. Moving on. Uh, use player data widget. I don't know why that's showing. Okay, use player data widget is. Uh, um, you'll notice in the uh, survival game mode, we have the UI that's on your offhand that shows your health and your score. Um, while that's a fine way to do it, we we plan on expanding the UI greatly. <laughs> it's just sort of a temporary thing, and, and this is um, how you turn it on, make it shown in, in the world. And below it are the two uh, locations. Um, and on begin play, and when you change main ham, hand in game, it sets the uh, player data uh, transform to these transforms, so that they'll, it'll be correctly located on the offhand. All right, we have the bullet inventory here, and um, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have bullets, you have max bullets. The the bullets are the current bullets. Um, all this bullet inventory stuff is probably going to get moved into a a, a an inventory uh, blueprint in 1.1 um, that will make it easier for saving and loading and, and just kind of streamlining a lot of things. Um, and I've got a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, bullets that we don't actually use, but I decided to put some more calibers in here for people so you wouldn't have to go through the scripting yourself. Um, most of our stuff is going to, in the near future, is going to be 45, 556, 12 gauge, 308, and 9 millimeter. Though, in the future, we're definitely going to probably, and, and arrows, sorry, and arrows. In the future, we're going to be expanding on magic and some other stuff that will uh, we'll probably use some of these other values as well. But they're there for you to use if, if you wish or want to. Um, and if you want to add your own... You have to, uh, I mean, you just add your own new variables. Let's see, we'll go down to over here. This doesn't like me right now. Bullet inventory. There we go. Bullet inventory. And then you would add, um, I don't have an example. Um, 
we'll just call it bullet ammo we'll duplicate that and we'll call the other, the other one max Oops. bullet ammo spelled that wrong but whatever and then we have to go and we have to go to an enum that holds all of our bullet types enum ammo types and we need to add a new and we'll make it uh what do we call that bullet ammo we'll just call it bullet let's go ahead and put it above none save close out the enum go back to VR character and now we need to go into the functions and there's an add ammo and you will need to add a so we have bullet here let's just copy this section right here and we need to pull off our new variable of bullet ammo set max bullet ammo get so what we're going to do and we need to pull this local amount what this add ammo does is it takes your one to add ammo to your inventory so from your gun or from picking up something um, it's going to take the amount that you want to pick up or add and add it to the local amount and then we're going to take um, our current bullet ammo so we're gonna add the local amount to the current bullet ammo and make sure we want to take the minimum between the max bullet ammo and the bullet ammo and then we want to set so we'll drag off right there okay we want to set the uh, bullet ammo And then we need to finish this off by updating the actual the mag counter UI. And so that's it for adding ammo. Now you have to do the exact same thing for where is it at? Subtract ammo. Slightly different. So you just take local amount, and you take bullet ammo, and then you set bullet ammo, because we're going to subtract bullet ammo by the... Uh, local amount that's being brought into this function and uh, we're gonna set bullet ammo and that'll set the uh, that and that'll make it where you can add and remove your new type of ammo to the inventory I'm going to go ahead and remove all of that anyways I'll do that in a minute um, let's go back to here all right so and that's just your bullet inventory. So movement. Movement mode is uh, the currently used movement mode. Um, movement modes is an array of the current or, or of the available movement modes. Um, you can remove uh, these or all of them um, and just use teleport. Um, if you do that, I would also remove them in the uh, the UI um, which can be found at Weapon Master UI in game menu and you're gonna wanna remove the uh, movement type teleportation uh, these uh, the actual text and the combo box and you're also gonna wanna remove um, this movement mode function right here and all of this um, movement mode function right here so that it doesn't show up 
or cause any errors in your uh, in your game. Let's go to compile. So, um, a directional teleport distance is how far a directional teleport, a single directional teleport, will go. The reset time is how long between teleports. The wall bounce amount is how far off the wall uh, the character will actually placed. If it hits a wall, um, the locomotion height adjust has to do with the dummy mover. Let me go back to the uh, video graph. The dummy mover is how we handle uh, the uh, locom or the character movement. Uh, for traditional locomotion in um, Weapon Master. And um, the actual capsule for the capsule, the character capsule, um, is slightly above the ground. And this locomotion height adjust just makes it equal to the actual position of the root of, the, uh, this, of your uh, VR character, which is the... Uh, the middle of your play space, the actual height of your play space, I guess you would say. Um, use original teleportation. This is if you want to use Epic's navigation based teleportation and not mine. Um, you can actually come in and rip out um, both of our teleportation methods and use your own if you want if you want um, and just make sure to keep the uh, keep the all the stuff pertaining to the uh, teleport movement in the VR character or VR character hand blueprint which I'll talk about here in a second um, damage sound these are just two sounds that we've added uh, for the tutorial for the uh, example we're gonna expand the sound system for players with footsteps and whatnot in the near future um, and this is just the the sound you t play when when you get hit and the sound that plays when you die um, show chaperone. You can show the chaperone on the ground. Um, default. This is all what comes in from uh, the, uh, the this, this blueprint's parent, which is the motion controller pawn. <clears throat> I generally don't mess with any of that. Um, there's no real need. Uh, pawn. Don't really talk about that. Replication. Nope. Nope. Input. Nope. Actor. Nope. Okay. Let's uh, go over a couple of the uh, main areas, things you may not know. Let's start with begin play. Um, all of this top part is taken directly from motion controller pawn. We needed to make some changes, um, so we've just overridden the begin play of motion controller pawn and copied a couple things over. over. Um, it handles the eye level for the two different headsets, and um, it uses uh, it sets the uh, VR origin and the uh, sets the use controller to roll, roll to rotate to true. Here's where we had to make a difference um, or change. Instead of, we didn't want to, uh, just use the BP motion controller. We wanted our own uh, hand component, which extend, extends from motion controller, but we, we still wanted to, to do it our way so we uh, we did collect we do collect the right controller and the left controller just like the original does but then we cast to our own VR character hand and then set that um, the VR character hands for left and right are paramount to the system working um, if you if this isn't is if this isn't happening nothing is gonna work all right so right now we're gonna move the player to the ground I found that a lot of times when you're trying to figure out VR and you're loading in a character, you, you, it can be kind of a pain to figure out where ground or where to place the, the player start thing that your character is actually on the ground. This just gets around that. We're setting our default scene route to the ground position. Um, so you don't have to worry about um, if is your character going to spawn at the right height. <clears throat> um, spawning a target and dummy mover. This is... Uh, the AI target is our workaround for getting the uh, AI to follow you around the room scale place, uh, space. Sorry, this. So the AI actually looks for this target. Um, when we figured out how to actually get the traditional movement working, we create we 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 use what's called a dummy mover, and a dummy mover is simply. Um, I can go right here and show you. It's in the uh, blueprint. It's basic. 
BP VR dummy mover is just a is a, a blank class, a blank character uh, class. Um, it's got nothing in it, but it does have a character movement. And the only thing this thing does is take data from uh, the VR BP VR character to actually move the character. And so we save that as the dummy mover. In 1.1, the AI target is going to go away, and we're going to be using the v, the dummy mover um, as the the target for the uh, AI to follow you around, which should free up a little bit of a uh, tiny amount of performance um, since we don't have to set the AI target's position all the time. Um, below that, we check, we're going to go ahead and check a game mode. This is for the survival game mode, but you can change this to anything you want it to be. You just need to create a new variable. So if you have your own game mode, I would check it here. Um, or if you want to just keep extending our survival game mode, you can do that. Um, I, you you want to check your game mode first um, and then load variables. And so this is loading the options uh, variables. In the future, this will be where we're loading our inventory as well. Um, let's see. Initialize equipment is where we actually initialize the inventory. And so this is the, um, st all that's the starting commands we talked about, um, when we, uh, were talking about the, uh, starting primary holster, starting melee, uh, stuff like that, starting hand object, all this stuff is, is where, um, we actually put those things in the, the appropriate um, areas and this will also in the future be where all of our loaded inventory stuff gets put in the appropriate area oops didn't mean to do that all right let's see so we talked about that um, all of our input is done in this input section right here um, you can see the track pads, our thumbstick based movement. You'll notice that teleport is blanked out, and that's because teleport is actually handled on the uh, VR character hand blueprint. Um, if you want to change the, what the menu button does or what any of the buttons do, this is the section where you would do that. And generally, it just makes sure that. A lot of these will say, oh, are we not dead? Are we not using the main menu? Because the main menu kind of takes over. Well, if, you, if you push the main menu up, or like if you open the main menu, or the in, I call it, it's main menu, but I call it in-game menu, it's actually going to take over all of your button presses so that you can't fire a gun, you can't do anything until you close the main menu. Um, all of our overlaps are handled here for... Um, weapons for the holstering system in the inventory um and also for um like uh putting um magazines and um bullets in their own inventory um and they're actually done separately than the guns going into holsters um let's see talk a little bit about Get inventory. Okay, well, when you're grabbing an item from your inventory, if it's a magazine, it's actually you're actually getting a physical item. I mean, this is a fairly complicated looking blueprint, and if you want to like learn more about it, you can come and read some of the comments. But basically, when you grab something out of your inventory, if it's a magazine, you're grabbing something out of an array. And it randomly selects out of the array, an array. And I'm going to put an option in for it to always select the magazine that has the most ammo in it for you first. Or it can randomly grab it out as well. When you grab a bullet out, it's just spawning a bullet because there is no... Bullets are just um, int values. They aren't physical values. So every time you um, grab a bullet out of your inventory, it's just spawning a new bullet. Sorry, and uh, subtracting it from your your inventory. Let's see, what are we gonna talk about next?
we do have the up, update mag counter function. Um, again, you can kind of look at, at what we're doing here. Um, our mag counter, which is the, the, the two numbers in front of the, the, uh, the bullet and magazine inventory box, it's dynamic in that whatever hand, if you're holding a magazine in your left hand, the left box is going to tell me, tell you how many bullets you have for that magazine type holding a gun in your, in your right hand that uses a magazine. It's going to tell you how many mag on the right inventory is going to tell you how many magazines you have. Um, and this is how we, this is just how we got it. The, the function we use for, for how it is dynamic. go back here and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff we do in tick. So right off the bat in tick, we do take a delta time and we actually do call to the parents tick because there is some stuff that the motion controller pawn needs to do, um, particularly pertaining to teleportation. Um, we need to find out if the trackpad is down because in this section right here, is where we set the ground while you're moving around in room scale. So if you, you can actually walk, because of this section right here, you can actually walk up and down, physically walk up and down stairs or ramps just by walking forward in your room scale space. And we do set the actual dummy mover's position here so that it's always um, where it needs to be. Um, this is where I need to talk about collision. Um, the system for deciding what ground is, is Weapon Master considers everything that is world static and world dynamic to be ground. And when, you're, when I'm tracing for objects um, to decide where the ground is, I'm also looking for no step. No step is what you should put all your walls and um in any objects in your world you don't want the character to be able to step up onto because if if something is world static or world dynamic and you walk into it like physically walk into it it will snap you to the top of it that's just how the uh the player height um the world room scale height uh thing works in the future i'm going to make it where there's a maximum value it can snap up um, and possibly a maximum slope. Um, I still need to uh, work on that a little bit more. <clears throat> I almost had it ready for 1.0.2, but I decided it needed some more um, work, so I took it out. But it, it should be coming in 1.1, which, which should help with some stuff, um, stepping up on top of it. But um, this is a general rule. Use no step for your walls. No step will... I mean, guns and stuff should hit no step and projectiles and stuff, but the character and the teleportation, none of that will interact with it. So yeah, your ground should be world static and world dynamic. Um, when we're moving with the track, the trackpad, we have to um, move the character with the dummy mover so the dummy mover is another character um sort of it's it's just a dummy mover it's it's what it says it is so it's going to move forward and on the tick we're going to move along with it um and we're going to set it off uh the default scene route so that you can physically move around in your uh play space your room scale space while you're traditionally moving and everything stays lined up, all your collision, everything works. Um, and if you and if you do move using the traditional movement, you will collide with things. You aren't gonna like go through stuff. But if you walk in your real world space, you won't collide with stuff. You will walk into things. Um, so you need to keep that into uh, under advisement. Um, and this is where, like I um, mentioned earlier, this is where we set the damage capsule half height to take collision into account. And it's also where we rotate it um, to make sure it's all facing the right direction. Um, let's see, is there anything else I really want to talk about here? I 
We do have a kill player command. Um, it gets called when your health reaches zero. It will first try and drop whatever's in your right hand. Then it will drop whatever's in your left hand. And then it will show the game over screen and then restart the level after a certain amount of time. Now, this is obviously going to change. Um, especially, well, I mean, it, it honestly doesn't matter. Actually, it probably won't change. Um, unless you want you don't want me dropping stuff when your player dies. I just assume that would be okay. Because you're going to be saving at another point anyways, so you won't be saving when a character dies, their inventory. Um, so yeah, this will probably stay. And if you don't want the, the game over string or you want to have your own UI, uh, delete the game over screen here and uh, remove this whole section right here. And then you can um, add your own... Uh, logic for game over just by pulling off of the uh, the pin or adding a pin or pulling off of the pin right there that is now empty and then you could have your own game over where you can have them actually using a UI screen for like you know going back to the main menu or restarting or what have you um, this is just a quick and easy method in fact I might do like a, a really cheesy main menu uh, setup for people um, I think that might be helpful for y'all and um, <clears throat> I will uh, have it where when your character dies, they can restart the level or uh, load a checkpoint or um, go back to the main menu. But yeah, that'll all be coming in. I don't know if that's coming in 1.1. It may not come in 1.2, but that's just you know where we're going. We're st we've still got a long way to go with Weapon Master. Um, I hope y'all are in for the long haul because this is something that's going to take quite a long time for us to get where we want it to be. And uh, we don't think it's anywhere near where we want it to be right now. But we do think um, you guys are ready for it. And, and you definitely have been asking for it. So um, we want to get it out to y'all and start getting feedback. And we love the feedback we've gotten from y'all, by the way. Um, in fact, what Weapon Master is right now is because people didn't like our initial locomotion methods and wanted you know hey you need to make this more like epics template because that would just everyone's using that already and that was really smart we never even thought about that so thank you for that feedback and uh you're already seeing like we're willing to make changes if if we really if if, if we believe they are the right way to go and y'all were definitely right about that so let's see where we go next um we do have the load and save variables here um if you're not familiar with loading and saving, there's some good stuff on uh, Epic's wiki and their tutorial stuff about you know loading and saving. But in general, <clears throat> we load and save into a struct. That struct is found right here. Struct player options, as you can see, it's it's a collection of variables. And when we load and save, uh, we take whatever is currently being used by the main character and we set it in the struct and then we save it to the game slot <clears throat> oops sorry this is um, this is loading not saving <laughs> we take what's in the struct and then we pass it on to the actual var variables here what this is right here is if you try and load something and it's the very first time you have uh, run it. Like, like let's say this is the player's first time they've run the game. Uh, this is going to load the defaults. That's what it is. This is going to load the defaults, and it's going to save them. So that, and it's going to create that save game slot for their options. So that's it's. This is just setting things up for the next time they actually try and save. And we'll go look at save variables right here. And it looks very much the same. Saving to the struct. Saving to the slot, and this this struct is part of the uh, save game in instance, by the way. Which, if you look right here, this BP WM save is our save blueprint. And then we have a set variables. Uh, this is where we actually um, set the actual variables on the thing. There's we want to make sure that we're not doing stuff we don't need to do, which is why if if the main hand is equal to each other then we just don't need to do it we don't need to set the main hand again nor do we need to set the movement mode 
And then we do our FPS uh, counter visibility at the very end before saving them. Um, let's see. Alright. Um, holstering. Um, I don't like the way holstering works right now. I'm going to say that right off the bop. Right off the bat. Um, which is why I want to uh, change it. Uh, currently, right now, when you bring your hand into a holster area, it reads the, what the weapon is in your hand and creates a temporary holster item. And then if you press the grip, it it drops that item and then at, attaches it to the holster. And then when you try and pick it up, it detaches from the holster and puts it into your hand. Um, I don't know. I've had a couple people not like it, and I am willing to make a change. I'm going to do some research and hopefully get something in with the inventory update with uh, 1.1. Um, so just hold on there, and I will uh, see what I can do about holstering to make it a little bit more intuitive and uh, make it where it's not confusing, I guess. Um, also, we are going to be adding in a... Uh, a miscellaneous item holster which will hold any object whereas we consider objects anything that's not a weapon so that means you could holster a single magazine there if you didn't want to be pulling out of your magazine or you could holster a key or something else but it'll be one object that you can holster there we also want to add in a backpack that's something we've wanted since the very beginning um, we just got to figure out how we're going to do it and the best way to do it I know I know how I want to do it it's just the best way to do it that is not a mess um so hopefully that's either going to come in 1.1 or 1.2 i can't promise it for 1.1 the inventory is getting changed for 1.1 i don't know if the backpack is going to make it in because 1.1 is already going to be huge guys so um i mean it's it's got magazine updates three weapons um one of which is the rolling boat lock uh logic for uh for the magazine weapons you're gonna get an mp5 um, just today I decided we're gonna add in a uh, stripper clip fled blah, 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 stripper clip fed uh, sniper rifle so uh, yeah that's uh, what the bolt action rifle is gonna be anyways sorry I'm getting off track let me uh, get back on uh, subject here <laughs> uh, and not and, oh yeah sorry 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 just finished off what else you're gonna be getting in 1.1 inventory overhaul <clears throat> um, some bug fixes some changes to uh, hopefully some changes to holstering um, just, I know I'm forgetting something I will we'll have a thing on 1.1 uh, here in a few days once we hear here from epic uh, so let's see anything else I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this tree of uh, the hierarchy here um, these two you don't want to touch the default scene route and the VR origin the camera you don't really want to touch either I mean game over FPS counter those are just two um, I guess it'd be easier to see these if I went in here they're hidden right now but uh, <clears throat> there's two things that you can show the primary left trigger and the primary trigger right, these two things, are actually the triggers for when you're holstering and unholstering um, primary weapons. So if people have been having trouble with that, you can see they're right off your left and right ear. And it'll attach it to a, a socket right here on your back. And when you want to unholster, you just put your hand in there and press the trigger and it'll unholster. Um, so... this one too um let's see the capsule this is your damage capsule that i mentioned earlier this is what will change its height based on whether you're crouching or not um, i'm gonna put a head capsule as well um probably in 1.1 so that you can be headshot because why not um <clears throat> your secondary holster right here these are in 1.1 these are all going to be uh actual skeletal meshes not just boxes anymore including the inventory they're all going to have their own skeletal mesh as they should uh, holster melee um, inventory trigger back this um, is the same as this front inventory trigger 
I mean, they do the same thing. I don't know how many people know it exists or have tried using it. You can pull inventory items from behind your back as well. And you can pull arrows, like a quiver, from behind your back. I'm trying to figure out some way to make it easier where if you have something holstered on your back and you want to get an arrow from your quiver, you don't end up unholstering your weapon that's attached to your back and trying to knock it because that doesn't work, obviously. <laughs> um, you got your left mags UI, your right mags UI down here. You've heard me talk about those. Uh, and player data, which is not attached to anything, but gets attached on begin play. Um, I think that's it for the VR character. What are we, about 40 minutes in? Um, I'm going to real quickly go over um, the BP VR character hand. It's a much smaller uh, blueprint. It is uh, it extends from the BP motion controller. Um, it doesn't really have any variables you need to set. <clears throat> the one thing you do need to know is that um, we do all of our like trigger actions or like compound trigger actions. As you can see, it's kind of a, a blueprint mess. Um, I mean, it's not a mess. It's actually fairly organized for something as compl complicated as it is. But um, you can do the um, a basic epic um, pickup um, and drop. Let's see. In fact, it's right here. The interface pickup. We don't use their interface interface pickup. We use our own uh, weapon master grab function, which is a giant function. Um, this handles all the picking up, deciding whether it should pick it up, uh, whether it needs to look and see if there's something else there, um, whether we need to see if there's an interaction zone there because we want to interact with the weapon. Um, it handles dynamically setting the main hand. Um, I mean, you can read through it, um, and if, if y'all need me to go into depth for this, I can. But there's not really a reason you'd want to change uh, what's going on here. The one thing that is probably going to change is these actor tag things that I use, and you've see, probably seen me use these in other places. They're all going to go bye-bye, and they're going to become um, an, 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 an enum for the object, the, the kind of pickup object it is. Because I think that's cleaner than um, using actor tags. Because I think people get confused with actor tags. And um, it was just kind of an easy thing for me to do at the time. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move to uh, kind of make it more simple for y'all. Um, let's see. Other things that are in the event graph that you need to know. Probably the most important one is the activate teleportation. Now, you remember in BP VR character, let me go back and just remind you. When we were looking at our movement, teleport we weren't doing anything with on our VR character. That's because it's handled through the BP motion controller. And then we actually... Uh, override it in VR character hand so that we can make sure that the, the the hand we're pressing the teleport on is the main hand and then we, we need to make sure that our movement mode is teleport and then we then you'll it'll go into all the stuff that um, it's supposed to go on go in with the BP motion controller and I'll open that up real fast And that's all handled in the handle teleportation arc. And people wondering what changes I made for our version of this. Basically, I didn't like using the uh, the nav mesh. It, I, I don't know. It didn't work with upstairs and stuff like that for me. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at it again. But I kind of like the way ours works. Um, what, what what we're looking for? We're looking for four four different things. World static and world dynamic. Do you remember what those are? Those are what we consider ground or where we can teleport. No step and teleport occlusion. No step, 
Yep, that's the walls and, and things we don't want to teleport onto. And teleport occlusion is just an area that you can put a blocking volume with teleport occlusion. Bullets will still go through it, all this other stuff, but you won't be able to teleport through it. Um, that's what teleport occlusion is. Don't make your walls teleport occlusion or else your bullets go through your walls and that's not cool. I mean, unless you want them to, I don't know. So once we kind of like trace for these things, we make sure they're world static or world dynamic. And then we call a success. Let's see. And um, pass the trash. Blah, blah, blah. Pass the trait, not trash points. Pass the trace points. And then we go, I, I do pass the, uh, the nav mesh data and the trace location. Oh, sorry, this is, sorry, I was reading that wrong. I'm dumb, not. So this is, you know, remember that use epic, to, original epic teleportation? If it is not true, meaning we want to use weapon master teleportation, the nav mess location and trace location are actually the exact same thing. And so we pass that on to the rest of the, the function. If we are using that, let's go down to remind you, use original teleportation, well, if you go to VR character hand, event click, you'll see that we're setting ep use epic teleportation using the use original teleportation. So that's where that, this comes from. So if we do want to use epic's original teleportation that uses the nav mesh, then we're going to set it here. We're going to pass the nav mesh location and the trace location, and we're going to move on. So once we've got all that fun stuff, we're going to come over here, and there's one more thing I added. I added the select um, so that Epic was only searching 20 units down. I searched 2,000, or sorry, 200 units down. I searched 2,000 units down. And in the future, I'm going to make it where if it hits like a no step, and so right now, if it hits a no step, it's just not going to let you move. You have to actually be hitting the ground. But in the future, if it hits a no step or a. Uh, a blocking volume that is a teleport occlusion it's gonna actually find the ground below that um, so that it, you'll still be teleporting to a location it just it'll be you know that'll be the maximum you can go um, let's see if your character hand we're at 47 minutes uh, um, we do do our stabilization logic here um, we do have a rumble function um, if you want to call rumble um, there's both single rumble and looping rumble. Uh, they're actually the same right now. But in the near future, looping rumble is going to handle things like um, when you're in the interact zone to interact with a, uh, something, I want it to like like rumble repeatedly. Um, and that's something that's sort of just put there um, because it's going to do something in the near future. Then we have all of our uh, our button presses. Um, we do pass the trigger axis so you can use it in a, a animation for guns, and we'll talk about that more with uh, simple weapons and magazine weapons. Uh, our grip logic. If you guys want me to uh, add grip pickup again, I can. Um, that's going to be something that I'll do if if that's what y'all want. Um, but uh, so trigger on, trigger off, trackpad buttons. This is for um, only if you have an attached actor. Attached actor is, you know, something is, you know, attached to your hand. So um, I don't think there's anything else I really want to talk about when it comes to um, these two things right now. I'm sure I'll. Um, Think of something, or if there's something I didn't cover in this overview that you'd really like to know more about, I'll go into more depth. Just let me know. So, uh, I guess I'll end it right there at a cool 50 minutes. I'm um, hoping you're all having a great time, and uh, look out for the the magazine weapon tutorial that's going to be coming up next. All right, guys. Thanks. <laughs>